Hi, this is Satya, co-founder of SciSpot. One of the questions that I've been hearing a lot over the last couple of years from my customers is how to use a lab information management system. First, I don't like the word LIMS, lab information management system, because it's such an old school kind of term of early 2000, where information management, data management was a big problem. In the age of generative AI and large language models, I think we've kind of moved away from uh, just data management. These days, companies are focusing more on how to actually use a LIMS for data science and AI purposes. So I thought I'll do a quick video um, under five minutes just to like share some of the lessons I've learned um, over the last year and how the technology is changing the landscape of LIMS. So LIMS as it's defined uh, as, is a lab information management system that helps you connect disparate data, whether that's come from instruments, whether that comes from your unstructured notes, or it comes from your structured data for samples, inventory system. And ultimately it helps you kind of connect your metadata with your data. And the goal is that, uh, especially for biotech AI companies and data science companies is to be able to make decisions faster, is to be able to connect your wet lab and your computational workflows together. So yeah, let's kind of, dive deep into uh, what I'm hearing from a lot of biotech AI companies. I want to share like a few lessons and a few things that you can keep in mind as uh, you're thinking about implementing LIMS or if you're thinking about how to use uh, a modern lab information management system and also like how do you effectively utilize that system for the outcomes that you're looking for in your organization. So the number one thing that uh, I do when I work with my customers is um, can, have you mapped out your data producers? Like, do you even know like who, what your data producers are? Like, forget about LIMS, uh, electronic lab notebook, a data infrastructure, or even AI in the beginning. Like, what are your data producers? For instance, do you know like what instruments you want to connect to, right? If you're using AWS or Azure infrastructure, do you have like any files that are coming from there? Like, are computational folks um, storing some uh, data or metadata in S3 bucket or blob storage that you want to be able to um, connect with your wet lab workflows so your wet lab folks can access that metadata, whether that's experiment or samples uh, through graphical user interface. And then uh, there is always flat files, right? In biotech, you get like uh, data from CROs, uh, academia, or any partners or collaborators that you have. Uh, there's always going to be flat files coming through, you know, as much as you'd like to avoid them. It's just, you'll still have some sort of flat files. And then um, also like if you have an in-house kind of system um, or you've bought an electronic lab notebook or you build something in-house, where are your unstructured data stored, you know? And then finally, like, what do you classify as structured data? Do you have a data dictionary? For instance, one of the customer I was working with a few months ago and they were basically like figuring out what is their data dictionary? How does the data flow from uh, parent to child, from oligoids to derivatives, like from cell lines to proteins to peptides, you know, there's various kind of um, data model that you can think of as your company goes from series A to like series C, uh, especially biotech AI companies. So yeah, number one thing I recommend is map out your data producers before even thinking of limbs and thinking of infrastructure and uh, in terms of how to use that data infrastructure. And then the second most important thing is you're kind of using LIMS or using any in-house uh, data systems as a wet lab scientist or as a computational person. Have you like really thought through your use cases? Um, so like a couple of use cases that I keep hearing is like, hey, I have this data swamp in, in my legacy system, Benchling, where I can't really make decisions out of it. Or, hey, I have access to like the API, but it's really hard to make real-time sync with my instruments. So figure out what are your top five use cases. You know, if you know like real-time sync is really important for you, uh, having a standardized data model is important, then just make sure you have them written down in a standard operating procedure. Because some labs that I work with, they prefer like a standardized data model. Some prefer like um, a, a good governance, but still like flexible data model. So there's trade-offs between the two. I think as a startup, uh, starts and starts building limb system as they're using it. Uh, it usually starts with like a flexible data model. And as they build more regulatory and compliance and governance around it, as the teams get bigger and bigger, they get more towards like having a stringent data model that you can still change and configure, but having some sort of baseline of your data model, you know, so you know 
how your experiments are connected with your samples and how your samples are connected with your results, how your plate data is connected with some of the metadata that you have from your experiments and protocols. And then one other thing, one use case that I keep hearing is like, I have like my wet lab folks using um, a limb system, but um, I have a certain folk computational system using a different uh, tool set altogether. And then I, I also use like some analytics tools. How do I bring them together in one place? So uh, as you're kind of using limbs, make sure like you have a good secure endpoint for your limb system. So it's easier for you to like embed uh, data coming from different sources in one place. And then thirdly, like as, as you're using a limb system, like do you have any friction points, you know? Um, like I see a lot of legacy systems do not connect your plate data with your uh, samples, with your experiment metadata. So I think having that uh, clarified of what those friction points are is just really important. Um, I was working with this customer um, in, the, in the Boston area. And then one of the things that is was I'm using limbs, but I think I'm not using it correctly because I still have this multiple handoffs from like uh, transformation of data and, and it's it's really consu uh, time consuming from like when you get the data, you trans do pre-processing for your plate data, connect it with some of your experiment data, and then you share it with uh, some of the wet lab folks. And these handoffs like um, causes like to lose the chain of custody and audit trail. So I would say like, as you use these limb systems, make sure you have some sort of chain of custody or audit trail recorded somewhere. Otherwise, um, it can cause problems as you're kind of growing and you know getting more towards the regulatory side of things long term. The other one is like uh, that I keep hearing is pushing data to benchling is is a huge friction. So um, a lot of our customers, I support customers, uh, we've kind of worked with them to help. How do you push data uh, into benchling or any other system that they might have? Uh, so uh, whatever limbs you end up with, make sure like it has a good connection with an electronic lab notebook or. Um, any kind of other systems that you're using, because the worst thing you can do is like having <laughs> two systems built in that don't talk to each other, or at least don't share like some sort of standard procedure to say, what is the source of truth? So you could have, let's say, inventory in one system as a source of truth. You can still push that inventory to another system where you're storing your experiment, your you're tracking your protocol deviations, but make sure there's a good connection between the two. And then lastly, like as you're using limbs, the kind of question I ask is what is the outcome that you want? So a lot of SciSpot customers, as they uh, start configuring SciSpot as a lab in, modern lab information management system, um, the number one question is like, if your friction goes away and you know your use cases, what are the outcomes that you want? Like ultimately um, the main outcome or one of the most prominent outcome that I keep hearing is, hey, I wanna share data amongst different folks and have those handshakes done without losing the chain of custody. And unfortunately, a lot of old school limb systems, uh, old school electronic lab notebook systems, um, I don't wanna name them, but you know what those are and what they like kind of limit is, um, they don't let you um, get data out easily or push data easily or pull data easily because they force you to become the source of truth. And in my opinion, in 2024, if you're building a modern limbs um, or configuring a modern limb such as SciSpot, uh, our philosophy, or at least uh, the philosophy of our team is that we don't push the teams to make um, limbs or SciSpot or any other tool like as their um, single one-stop shop, right? We don't wanna create another um, data swamp, if you will, or another like, um, one source of truth, if you will. I think as companies evolve, uh, what I've noticed is the most, the biggest problem is having like chain of custody and handshakes done. So getting data in and getting data out is more important than forcing people to like have everything inside one system, right? That's not feasible because ultimately you will have computational workflows uh, where people wanna use data pipelines, uh, which could be in AWS, and you want to have a good graphical user interface for wet lab folks so they can easily like use that GUI to be able to uh, connect some of their metadata and data and share it back with computational folks. So in my opinion, as you use limbs, make sure like whatever limbs you adopt, whether that's SciSpot or not, um, the biggest thing is like, um, fortunately, if you use SciSpot, it's easier to get the data out and also uh, pull data. There's a secure API on docs.scisport.com. But if you use a legacy limb system, old school limb system, 
make sure you like in your proof of concept test out how easy it is to get the data out because a lot of companies, uh, especially biotech AI companies, want to build their own um, intellectual property. Uh, and you want to make sure that if you have Databricks, Snowflake, or some sort of data repository, data lake that you want to build for long term for your IP, there is a really easy way to get data out of Limb system. And that's what kind of size what makes it really easier for the customers. Okay, cool. So let's say you've kind of built your limbs in-house or you bought SciSpot, or if you're using legacy uh, system, uh, make sure like you start with a glue infrastructure. So SciSpot calls this glue where it's almost like connecting data. So as you work with companies, we focus on like not uh, forcing them to retrofit the workflow into the limb system, but like um, helping them connect and make their uh, current infrastructure interoperable. So having this kind of glue in your infrastructure is really important. And then um, as you kind of using limbs or configuring limbs or implementing limbs, make sure you think of like search and discovery and how would you connect your wet lab tool to computational tools. So here are some of the examples that kind of SciSpot supports um, and how it helps companies kind of connect uh, disparate data together and helps you pull and push data to and from uh, the limbs platform as well. Great, and then uh, I wanna also highlight a case study. So um, without naming the customer and kind of abstracting some of the information, um, when we started working with this particular customer based in the Bay Area, they had like 10 plus data sources, right? So they, they work with CROs, they have instruments, they have legacy databases, QPCR instruments, a lot of vendors, and um, they were spending a lot of time kind of building this in-house. And I feel like this is one of the things where you can have a debate of build versus buy, but ultimately you wanna make sure like there's a mixture of both, right? So you can build your core infrastructure, your IP, your data lake, but make sure you use a, a modern limb system like SciSpot Glue, which can automate some of your uh, workflow and also uh, make some of your data interoperable and makes it really easy to pull and push data. So yeah, this was like a high level video of how to use a lab information management system. Um, make sure you like think of long-term because you wanna make sure that your electronic lab notebook and lab information management systems are modern enough so they become catalyst into your LLM infrastructure. So as you build your own uh, rack pipelines or large language models, make sure um, there's a very secure API that can connect to your downstream uh, workflow. And as you start using these LIM systems, also make sure you have a really good uh, data model and you understand the trade-offs between like really stringent data model versus flexible data model. But yeah, if you have any questions, want to talk more, uh, you can email me at satya at uh, But thank you for watching.